sometimes things just can't be changed. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Season 4, Episode 3 of Supernatural, In the Beginning. This was another one of those kind of alternate but really just time travel episodes involving Dean. This episode has Dean going back in time and meeting his mother, his father, his grandfather, and the first encounter with Yellow Eyes, and realizing that his destiny is, at the time, so compact that no matter what he does, nothing can change what is set before them. And I'm trying to remember if this is actually a real history, or is this just kind of a illusion of a history kind of like what Zachariah is going to do in season five but this episode had Dean learn more about his family learn more about yellow eyes answering a bunch of questions that was left open for us all the way back to season one and really hammered in season two and season three it's fun to see Dean get to interact with his mother and his father find out more about their histories and sort of shape their histories at least in this reality funny enough as great of a narrative as this episode is which by by the way it's written by Jeremy Carver it's also a bunch of very mild fan service we're featuring yellow eyes we're featuring the history of the Winchesters and we are alluding to more of yellow eyes's plan a character who's been dead for a whole season now but still is so prevalent to the events that are transpiring in front of our characters I still remember watching this for the first time and thinking that maybe Dean could change something maybe that he had a chance at fixing things and over several viewings later on I would have that same feeling kind of like how we all have that feeling of hoping that Anakin Skywalker isn't going to go in and chop Mace Windu's hand off. Some people would say that Juliet doesn't poison herself and finds out that Romeo isn't dead, but you know, I'd like to use my favorites for that kind of example. But as we see, everything is set and everything will transpire the way that it's supposed to. I didn't get that feeling watching it this time, but this is my fifth or sixth or I can't really tell number of viewing of this episode. So that feeling's kind of wished away a little bit, but it's still a very solid episode. Everything about it is tight, everything about it is compact, the writing and the pacing and the events that happen in this episode are fantastic. It also ends off with another cliffhanger. Castiel was just dropping cliffhangers. He's done three in a row now and now he's set the threat of Sam, of what will happen to Sam, what the angels might do to Sam, and what is Sam really doing. Really goddamn good building! three episodes in a row. So in the end, I'm gonna give In the Beginning a 7 out of 7. This is actually a solid, solid goddamn episode. It's not as impactful to me as it used to be, but I can't deny just how good this episode is. And before we continue on to the comments, let's do our Patreon supporter shout out. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. Thank you guys so much. Recently rewatched episode three for the first time in 11 years. It's one of the best episodes of the season, especially like the portrayal of Yellow Eyes possessing Mary's father as he interacts with Dean. For a character with such a scarce amount of screen time, he really was given intriguing dialogue and just enough of an air of mystery to keep you guessing. I do like the actor who plays him. He's from the X-Files, which a lot of the guys who worked on this show were still X-File alumni, including Kim Manners. Funny enough, I didn't like his portrayal as much in this show, and I hated when they brought him back in season 6, but his character in the X-Files is a fantastic character. I really liked in the beginning. I love that Mary doesn't want her kids to be hunters, however, she makes the deal with Yellow Eyes. She unknowingly puts a curse on the boys and John, which leads to all of them going down the path of being hunters. I also love that this whole episode is a nod to Back to the Future. Dean and Cass are Marty and Doc. The episode even ends with a to be continued, which I thought was a nice touch to end on. And it's one of the few episodes that has one of those dropping bombs at the end of each episode. LMAO Iron. It was pretty bad, right? I really liked episode three. It's really cool that Kripke planted the seeds for Mary's deal in season one with Ghost Mary apologizing to Sam. Remember when the recaps of the show meant something rather than just, hey, remember that? Hey, remember that? It's the same thing, yes, but they are reminding you of the critical story elements because you need to know what's going on. Now, this one particularly actually isn't about the episode, but I, I like what's written here, so I thought I'd read it. Cass in the fourth season was glorious, and it's intriguing how his character evolves when he starts to question Heaven's orders. Even if he is a supernatural creature, he is the most realistic character in the series. He always tries to do the right thing, but in the end, he has to suffer the consequences of his choices every time he makes a mistake. Unfortunately, the writers and producers of the series have ruined Castiel's character because 
they never valued Misha Collins as an actor. He was disposable. They have cut many of Misha's scenes and excluded him from many important episodes. The same thing happened with Mark Shepard who was not happy with Crowley's ending. It is normal that Cass's character has changed after all the traumas he has suffered. The fall from heaven, Leviathans, amnesia, craziness, purgatory, mental control, Lucifer's possession, multiple deaths, and tortures. He can't even have a moment of happiness in this life. But what bothers me is that from season 13 onwards, his character no longer has a decisive role in the plot. Even his last sacrifice was useless because Jack dies again, killed by God in episode 20, and Dean dies impaled in a barn in the last episode, even before he can enjoy his own freedom and honor Cass's sacrifice. I blame the writers for that. Yes, I will definitely agree that Castiel lost his importance. I feel he lost his importance after season 11. They, like, gave him an importance because of that stupid business with him taking on Lucifer. I remember being so chirped by that because I thought that the preseason finale of season 11 was so good and then this one was like, ah, but it was written by Dad, so that was the beginning of the end for that. And then we got one more here. In the beginning is one of those episodes that is so emotional for Dean to see his parents. Fun little job back to the future moment for Dean to encourage John to get the Impala. I mean, can you imagine if the show had them driving a hippie van? However, Dean's conversation with Mary was especially heartbreaking. I love that Dean talks about hell literally instead of as an expression from calling his mom a babe. It's funny at first but then you see Dean's traumatized from it because he knows exactly what hell is and it's no longer just an expression to him. One thing that amazes me is that the show was allowed to have Yellow Eyes possess Mary's father and make a deal and show the two of them made out for the deal. So gross yet horrifying how desperate Mary can be for that deal. And then to see Castiel put his arm around Dean, it shows the comforting side of Castiel that reaches out to Dean in his way his brother Sam couldn't at the time. It's amazing how little Sam here is in this episode. Yeah, he's basically in the very beginning, which that's the one little tidbit I, I kind of didn't like was how Ruby said, by Sam, and then all of a sudden she's back in this episode. It's not really explained. But it had to be done for Dean to catch up with Jean knowing the real reason for Yellow Eyes visiting the Winchester home in the first place. One reason I love time travel and Supernatural for the most part is that they don't go back and really change anything and are more so witnesses to events taking place. It's a very smart move for the show so they don't have to add any unnecessary exposition. This is also one of the very few episodes where we get to be continued ending instead of just showing the executive producers. Castiel's threat to Dean about the angels, that the angels will stop Sam from engaging in his Dean demonic practices, practices if Dean doesn't stop him is a great callback to really why John Winchester says that he needs to save his brother or kill him. I'm not saying John knew the angels would show up to kill Sam, but he knew that Sam would become a demon, or something like that I guess, because it's a mention in season 2 premiere that John has known for a while of Yellow Eyes is giving children demon blood, but it really makes you wonder if John knew why the Yellow Eye demon was doing it, or he was just simply using their incident as a common lead. Thank you guys for your comments, make sure to give me your comments about Metamorphosis in the next episode that I'm going to be reviewing, and I'll read off those comments in the next episode review. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. And if you're interested in supporting me on Patreon, the link is in the description below as well. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode review. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.